Hello guys, um, today just a very short topic, uh, I usually like to make a bit larger uh, videos, longer videos, but uh, I thought this would be kind of interesting. Yesterday I uh, followed a special course and it's about, uh, it's about health in trees and risks uh, in trees, health risks, and this is a perfect example of a health risk and uh, a danger to uh, your tree, every tree, by the way, not only yours. And uh, well, let's have a closer look uh, at it. This uh, Maripolis uh, Gigantium, well, you already can see why it has that name, a scientific name, but also why it's called uh, Giant Polyper. Uh, fungus. Now it's all around. It doesn't have to be necessarily all around. It could grow in let's say a third of the root system of your tree and that might not be uh, as life-threatening as this is because this is all around the tree. That means that all the bigger roots are affected and therefore this tree is totally, totally unstable. Now if we wouldn't have done this to it, if we wouldn't have taken away the entire top, this tree could fall over at any moment. It would look healthy, it would appear a very healthy tree with green leaves, nothing going on, seemingly, and then could be a windstill day, could be the most beautiful weather you could imagine and the tree could be looking beautiful all of a sudden it would just fall over it wouldn't even it wouldn't even crack probably you wouldn't he you wouldn't hear a sound except for the windy rushy sound that the falling tree makes because underground all these big roots you see here they could be totally be eaten away so you see a big root here now if I would take a shovel and I would start digging, these roots might be eaten away completely. So how does this tree stay alive? It will form very small little roots in between these bigger, bigger roots. And these small little roots, you can see some small roots here. And I think that we have found exactly what I mean. You see these smaller roots? They will come out of these bigger roots. And these small roots will keep the tree alive and look very healthy. But obviously these, these small roots, they don't do anything for the stability of this tree. Nothing at all. They would provide the tree with all the food it needs. But no stability at all. I mean, the weight of a tree like this is tremendous. It's a very heavy piece of lumber. And uh, if it doesn't grip the ground anymore, if it doesn't have these large, big, fat roots, stability is gone. Now there's more happening in this tree. As you can see here, it starts to crack. The moisture comes running out. There's more going on in this tree. But anyway, there you have it. It's not a symbiont. And it's not a dead wood eater, a saprophyte, it's a parasite. In forests, uh, you know, far away from humans and buildings, etc., just enjoy the mushrooms. But whenever safety is an issue, handle, handle this situation and handle it quickly. Because this threat is growing. If you are uh, working in the tree business and uh, if you're concerned about trees and their health and you want to preserve trees uh, and you want to keep safety as the most important factor around buildings and roads and people, then never overlook fungi. 
90%, maybe even more, 95% of things that can go wrong with trees happens underground, away from the eye. This is a very, very good example. Uh, this fungus, a root-eating fungi. Just look at the sheer size of these these mushrooms. Look at that. Now the, the mushroom is the the fruit of the of the fungus, like uh, like an apple in a tree. I mean, you could take it away. Some people think when you pull out these mushrooms, you'll take away the threat. You take away the fungus, but that's uh, that's a load of nonsense. I mean. Uh, Picking apples out of a tree doesn't hurt the tree, does it? Uh, in fact, it's meant to do that to uh, spread its genetic material. Um, if you uh, if you take an apple out of a tree and you throw it somewhere, chances are you'll get a new tree over there. It's the same with these fungi. They're like the uh, the apples in a tree. I mean, the seeds in the apple of the tree. I mean, the seeds come out of here. Now this is a this is a fungi that utilizes little tubes underneath, and in the tubes are the spurs, little uh, cell-like seeds that look like dust, a fine dust, and they will be taken out by the wind. And as soon as they encounter uh, a tree that's not too strong in health anymore, they will seize their chance, and they will be able to. Uh, start eating from the root system of that particular broadleaf tree. And uh, well, it's such a pity, I mean this was a, as you can see, it's a, it was a big tree. Just look at the sheer size of it, I mean, it's all gone now. Now these fungi, usually they, uh, they only get a chance when the tree is already weakened by something else. Uh, I can only guess what it has been here. I mean, you can see there's a little road here and the people that own this uh, particular place, they drive up and down here and they also mow this with a lawnmower. Now you can see the the roots that they are pretty uh, superficial. They are not deep into the ground. They, they run long, long, long way each, uh, in each direction. But they are really close to the surface and sometimes they pop out and they go under again pop out like a like a dolphin swimming and it's these places here where you uh you'll hit them with your lawnmower you'll hit them with your car they will get damaged and whenever you damage living material like this um, you'll open a door for bacteria fungi and whatnot now you can see, you can be sure that this fungus grows on the bigger roots of this beech tree. You can see if you go further away, and you can see the root running here. See that? Pops, pops out above ground. And here, there's another mushroom coming out of the ground. This particular mushroom is eating away the stability this far from the tree. Uh, dangerous. That's all I can say about it. This tree has no stability left. And uh, consequently, uh, we already took out the top. We had to do that and uh, this big piece of wood that still stands, we'll take that away here. Uh, probably this fall because uh, we've got this little shed here and we don't want it uh, in danger. And uh, sooner or later, probably not too soon, but within uh, this year and, uh, and a few, it will become so unstable that it will just topple over. It's impressive though, the size of these things. It's it's amazing, isn't it? You don't come across big mushrooms like this every day. Just look at it. It's already starting to rot. You can see it's already here. Uh, it's not as 
fresh looking anymore. It will go pretty quickly if this mushroom was here. We first saw it a few weeks ago and now it already starts to rot. So be sure if you, if you check for uh, safety of trees, be sure to do it in the right season. You know, uh, if you want to check for dangerous mushrooms like this, I mean, uh, end of August, beginning of September, it's a good season, beginning of fall. You will see most mushrooms around, maybe even a bit later. Uh, there's a little wolf spider on top. <laughs> see it? A little wolf spider. I like those. I mean, if you sometimes walk in the forest, you can see them by the hundreds just fleeing away from you, from wherever you plant your feet. Well, there you go. A small video about mushrooms today. Who would have thought? Well, I'm Dutch, so... <laughs> Many people would get the wrong idea if a Dutch person speaks about mushrooms, but in this case, I don't get—I don't think you will get very high if you eat them or smoke them or whatever. By the way, I don't smoke, and I also don't—I don't use drugs other than a glass of beer once in a while. I even think this this particular mushroom is edible when young. I don't think it's very tasty though, but I could be wrong. I've never tried to eat it. But uh, I think they are pretty harmless if you, if you try to eat them. If they will be good eating, I have my doubts. <laughs>